Today's video wasn't the video I was planning on making this week, but I have a bit of a problem with my smart home system. And it's to do with these kinetic wireless switches. If you haven't seen my previous videos on these, what these are are wireless switches, except these don't contain any sort of battery. Instead, what they do is they use the kinetic energy generated by clicking the switch to send a radio signal. There's a bunch of different brands that make these, but the ones I use here are from Quinetic, which is the brand name. And these work really well. As standard, you use the Quinetic receivers, so they sell their own little receiver modules, which are either relays or dimmers. You connect those up to your lights, and these switches control those. But in my case, I took this a step further, where I reverse engineered the radio protocol that these use and built a custom receiver. So what this now does is it takes the signals from these switches, receives it, and bridges it to my smart home over MQTT, allowing me to use these switches as inputs in Node-RED and Home Assistant to control my smart lights. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, check that video out, because I went into a lot of detail of how I figured out the radio protocol, how I picked up the signals and reverse engineered it and built this thing. So definitely check that video out, and I'll put a card up if I remember. So this setup's been working really well for about seven months now. However, the other day, I went to turn off one of the lights, pressed the switch, and heard a loud crack sound. And this is that switch module. And now when you click this in, the switch kind of just mushes. It doesn't actually click anymore. If you take a look at this working switch, it still works and click it and listen. It makes a very prominent click sound. Whereas this switch, if you listen, there's nothing, it just kind of creaks. It doesn't have that click anymore. So it seems to have completely failed internally and now no longer works. So what we'll do in this video is we'll take this apart and see how it's failed. And also see why I think this might be quite an expensive mistake I've made installing these switches. Because in trying to figure out how this one failed, I took apart another module. And this one's still working, but this one is about to imminently fail from the exact same thing that killed this module here. Which is a bit worrying because I've got a bunch of these installed. If one of them's already failed in seven months, this one's about to fail, I can't really trust the other ones, I don't think. Not to mention that I'm planning on installing even more smart lighting in other rooms, where I was going to be buying more of these modules, but having had this issue affect at least two modules, I don't really fancy spending even more money installing even more of these, so I feel like I might need to look for a replacement alternative to this system. Now, the issue I've had only affects, it seems to affect these MK grid modules. These big paddle switches, I've not really had an issue with them, but I don't really want to use these throughout my flat, because, well, they're a bit ugly. And I'm really fussy with things like electrical accessories. I want them all to match. So the reason I went for these grid modules is because I already have MK light switches throughout my flat, and they're from the MK Dimensions product line. So what I can do with these grid modules is I can easily install these MK compatible grid modules into my MK switch plates, and they look just like standard light switches. They match all my existing switches. What I can even do, which I actually have in some, pl some places, I can have a kinetic grid module here, and on the same plate, have a regular light switch module like this MK one, or this one here, which is a normal rocker module, I can install that alongside it and have what essentially looks like a two gang light switch, except one of these is a kinetic module. So that's why I went for these grid modules. So it's a real shame if I can't keep using them because I don't really want to go and put these paddles everywhere. So I don't know what I'll end up doing, using to replace this. We'll figure that out in the future. But what we'll do now is we'll take this module apart and see how it's failed. So here we have this module. And the way to get into these is the top just kind of clips on. So I've already taken this apart just to briefly check it out. I've not taken, got really fully into it yet, but it's really just a case of finding the sort of little gap between the top cover and the edge and just levering it off. It's going to be a bit tricky for me to do on camera because, well, I can't really see what I'm doing here. So I'll go off camera, get this open and we'll come back. Okay, so to remove the top, that was relatively easy to do, just unclips. And now we can see we have the inside of the switch. So we have the switch rocker here that, as you can see before, is just mushing up and down, it's not clicking reliably, and everything else underneath. So we can release this rocker, we just undo this little clip on the front here, that rocker will pop up, and then we can lift this up. And now we can see what's happened here. This piece underneath, which is the actual kinetic module itself, is springing up. Now if we take a look at this other switch that is not broken yet, although it's about to, you can see that module isn't springing up, that's sitting down there. And if you look around here, you can see this little wire piece on the front. It's got this bit of wire that comes out. That goes under this plastic clip here that holds that wire sort of in tension down to give some spring pressure. So you can see I have this little clip here. But if you look on this switch that's broken, you can see that clip is broken off both sides. There's no clip there holding that wire in, causing this piece to spring up. 
And I bet if we, sh- and I can hear something rattling around inside here, I think it's now gone down inside the mechanism. But there it is. There's one of them. There's one of the little plastic clips that's broken off, and I can still hear the other one rattling around inside here. So that's what's happened. These clips have broken off, remove- meaning that wire there is no longer kept in tension or compression, whichever it is, which is required to have the spring pressure to allow the switch to click. And this is where I think this isn't an isolated incident because this clearly has place for two of these clips. There's one on each side, one here and one here. And as you can see on this, both of those have broken off. One of them's fallen out, the other one's still rattling around inside here. But here we have the other switch that still works. But let's look inside here. We can see one of the plastic clips is still there, but the other one is missing. And if we shake the switch around, shake upside down, Again, it's not coming out, the joys of the things that worked before filming, but not now. But there is clearly another one of those clips rattling around inside here. So on this switch, it's clearly broken off of this one side, and now there's only one of these left. And this is why I'm a bit concerned, because this switch, both of them have broken off. This one is now hanging by a single clip. I daren't think what the other ones I have installed are like. And also, because this has a, a, quite a lot of spring pressure pressing up on this clip, because one of these is now broken off, there's now going to be a lot more pressure on the remaining clip. So I suspect that's going to fail even easier than the one that's already failed. So yeah, that's not good. So yeah, now we can see how it's meant to look inside, where what you have is this little piece here that's pressed down by the switch actuator, and then the spring that presses up and really puts this back to its original position, making this a momentary switch. I think they sell these in non-momentary variants, so not, not the grid modules, but the various other switches, where you can click between two positions. But I think to make this a momentary switch, what they're doing, or a retractive switch, is that this clicks down, but is that the switch rocker pushes this down, and this wire spring piece springs it back up again when you release the switch. And of course, on this one, because that spring's broken free, that now no longer works. It's no longer going to spring back up again because of the way the pressure is being applied. So it's kind of dead. Additionally, you can see these little wires that stick up off the bottom that, uh, t- that touch down onto a PCB at the bottom of this module that seem to connect to the antenna. These seem to connect the module through to the antenna, and because this has sprung up and this whole module's lifted up, those are also no longer making contact, which probably also explains why it's not working. Although it's not clicking anyway, so that's also why it's not working. But yeah, with that now sort of, well, completely broken, we may as well take it apart and see how it works, because let's face it, I can't really break it anymore. Now, I'm not going to be able to go into a huge amount of detail about how this works, I'm not going to take the little kinetic module itself apart, but if you're really interested in how these works, Big Clive did a bunch of videos where he took the actual kinetic modules apart I'm pretty sure and looked at how they work internally so that's there definitely very interesting if you want to figure out more how this works but in this we'll just do a fairly high level look so we can take that switch rocker off and under here we have the module so we've got that spring in there kind of holding it in place but if I can kind of work out to get that module out from under the spring there we go here we have the kinetic module itself and here's the rest of the shell so here we have that spring and all that spring does is just spring down there and the idea being to return the switch back to its original position but obviously that's completely broken free and here we have the kinetic module itself. So it's a completely solid unit, so I don't know if I'll be able to get inside. I might be able to try and get the cover off. Actually, I will be able to. There we go. Well, I've broken it even more now, but oh well, it's already broken. So th- this cover will break off of that. And what do we see? We can see a little coil inside that. I don't exactly know how these work. I suspect it's just going to be some sort of magnet moving through a coil very quickly that can generate a radio signal. But yep, yeah, you've got a little coil in there. And on the front, we've got this little actuator arm that sticks out. And this clicks between two positions. So it clicks down and it clicks up. And this is how what that spring's doing. The top switch rocker is pressing this down, but then that spring is being used to t- push it back up again. And because it's broken, that's now not working. What you then have here is these two little connections that come off, looks like a little bug. These connect down onto these contacts on the PCB at the bottom of this module and that'll presumably connect through to some sort of antenna. I'll try and take this apart more just to see because it'd be interesting to see if there's any components under there or if it's literally just a connection through to the antenna. But yeah, that's how that works. That connects onto the antenna underneath there. And that's a little kinetic module. I've also just interestingly noticed that after taking this apart, after taking off those side pieces, these are all literally just magnets holding it together. So these are literally just little magnets that all just kind of come apart. That's kind of cool. I don't know if they're all magnetic or if they're just... um... Yeah, so that's not a magnet. And is that piece? That's not a magnet, but this is. So yeah, there's a little magnet. It's all kind of held together with magnets, which is kind of cool. And inside there, you can see the actual coil. 
um, that's making it work. Like, I don't quite know exactly how this works, there's presumably some sort of little chip in there, but yeah, that's the inside the Kinetic module. I love how I said I wasn't going to take the module apart now I'm doing it, but I've also just realised that now with those magnets removed, this inner piece does just actually slide out. So I wonder if this is literally just a coil that generates the power and everything else is done by this, because this just looks like a coil of wire around this sort of actuator piece in the middle with some magnets around it. Is this magnetic? Nope, so that's not magnetic, so it seems to just be this bit of metal that moves inside a coil that's got a magnet next to it. It's interesting. There must be more in this, but yeah, that's kind of weird. I need to actually go and watch my Clive video on how these work, because I watched that years ago and forgot everything about it, but yeah, that's kind of interesting. That actually little piece pulls out. That's your little actuator piece. And then you have these two legs here that appear just to come through up and then connect directly onto the coil. So yeah, that's actually all there is to it. It's pretty simple. So with all those parts out of the way, because that seems to just be kind of some sort of energy generation thing, let's now take this part a piece apart, because this seems to presumably contain a bit more logic, because I can't see any sort of chips in this part, so presume there's more logic under here? Let's see. Okay, so I've now opened it up carefully, and I say carefully, I mean destructively, and you can see we're now inside, I've broken a little clip off, but whatever, it's already broken, but now we can see in here, there's that other little plastic clip that's broken out, so yeah, there's definitely two of them in here, and both of them have broken off, so yeah. But now here we have this board, and as I suspected, there's actually chips and circuitry on here. So I don't think there is actually really anything circuitry-wise inside this little module. I think this literally just generates the power and that's it. And then all the actual logic is on this little board here. So what I'll do now is I'll go away off camera and try and figure out some of the part numbers in these chips, see if I can work out anything interesting. It's probably fairly proprietary. And then we'll come back. And we're back. So I've now gone away and taken a look at little components. There's not really much of interest, just a single chip here. And this has a part number of A7329. So I've looked this up, and it appears to be a chip from a company called Amicom. And interestingly, it doesn't seem to be a chip designed for kinetic switches. It just seems to be a low-power radio transmitter for sub-1 gigahertz frequencies, so 433 megahertz, 868 megahertz, those kind of frequencies. So it literally just seems to be a transmitter designed for those radio frequencies. So I presume all they're doing here is this chip's just programmed so that whenever whenever it powers up, it just starts transmitting at the ID of this switch, because that's all it does. It's when you click the switch, it starts repeatedly transmitting an ID number until the power runs out. And actually towards the end of that, when the power's starting to run out, you can noticeably spot the signal strength dropping, and the signal becomes a bit garbled, like some of the numbers in, in that ID start getting flipped as the chip kind of starts dying on as the power runs out. So what I suspect they're doing here is just Power, have this chip just to program to transmit that ID repeatedly whenever it's powered up. There's circuitry here to presumably amplify or boost the power coming from this kinetic module. So the kinetic module gets clicked, generates power, it fires this chip up, and the chip just starts transmitting its ID repeatedly until power runs out, basically. So, fairly simple. I was generally expecting like this to be like a custom chip designed for kinetic switch applications, but it doesn't seem to be. It's kind of interesting. But yeah, that's all there is really to it. Just some various power circuitry, that chips, a crystal to power that chip, and then just wired an antenna on the back. Pretty simple. So there you go. That's a look at what's inside one of these kinetic modules. And it's been pretty interesting to see how it works. I wasn't expecting it to kind of be like this, where it's like a separate board with a separate chip. I thought this would just be like a complete solution that just does everything all in one, but it is actually broken out to separate components. So it's been interesting to take apart. I just wish I was doing it on better terms, where I've just bought one and decided to take it apart not because I'm taking it apart, because it's failed while I was trying to use it. And it is a little bit annoying going forward, because I really like these, and it was a really interesting project reverse engineering them, and to be honest, they've been working really well. But I just can't trust them anymore. Like, if this one's failed, and this one's about to fail, I don't really see myself wanting to buy even more of them. So I'll need to figure out a better solution. I think ultimately I'll go back to the solution I kind of had before, where I was using a regular retractive switch module wired in some sort of... Wi-Fi switch module. In this case, I'm using a Sonoff. I think for the new system, I may end up using, say, Shelly devices because these seem pretty good. So stay tuned if you want a video on that. But yeah, I can't really see myself using these kinetic switches going forwards. And it does beg the question about the reliability of using these for, say, customer installs if you're an electrician. Because I see a lot of YouTuber electricians installing these in people's houses. And while they definitely make sense in certain situations, say, for example, the customer wants an outside light that they want to switch downstairs for, it may be really hard to get a cable from downstairs to that outside light. So with these, you can very easily come off an upstairs socket circuit to power the light, put a kinetic switch downstairs, and have that set up. 
And to be honest, for that, these are probably fine. It's not something you're switching on and off regularly. It's a relatively non-essential thing. If the switch for your outside light broke, you can kind of deal with that. But I've seen people now doing full rewires where they've installed these switches as the primary switching, where they're not even running switch drops to all the rooms anymore. Instead, they're running all the switch, the light, lighting cabling to a central point where they have all the kinetic receivers, and then in each room they have kinetic wireless switches. Now that is a slight concern seeing the reliability of these, because imagine if you rewired an entire customer's house with these, use these MK modules so they could have you know nice looking switches, not the stupid paddle things, and then they all started failing like this. Well, that customer now can't turn their lights on and off, which is a bit of a problem. And additionally, if you're that electrician that's wired their house, well, you've now got to go and replace these possibly. And what if the customer decides that actually they don't want their light switches failing like this? Well, they've not got switch drops to all the rooms, so you're kind of stuck. So yeah, definitely interesting. I think they're still a great product and I would still use them in a situation where it's just convenient, you know, where you just like that outside light example. But yeah, I definitely wouldn't be using these as a primary means of, means of switching on any kind of essential lights. Yeah, not ideal. But yeah, hopefully you found this interesting. Definitely not the video I was wanting to do this week. I've got much more interesting stuff planned, so stay tuned for that. I might even do, try and do two videos in a week to try and get the video I was planning on doing out. But hopefully you found this interesting. And stay tuned for more interesting smart home videos, hopefully on better terms than this. And I'll stay tuned for a video where I probably build some sort of new switching solution. I've not quite decided what I'm going to do yet. Maybe these, maybe some sort of smart remotes. I'm not sure yet, but yeah, definitely stay tuned for that as well. But all I have to say now is thank you very much for watching. And if you're interested in this sort of stuff, I would definitely recommend checking out the video I made where I reverse engineered the radio protocol because that was quite a fun project.